and they're not using their voice to sing, same as we do. What they're using is their timbals. These are special drum-like organs on their exoskeleton that lets them make sounds. Welcome to Nature Explorers Insects, presented by the Danbury Public Library, where we explore the wonderful, tiny world of insects, bugs, and arachnids. This week, we're looking at cicadas. If you've ever heard an odd buzzing sound at night during the spring and summer months, then you've heard cicadas singing. Cicadas are large, bulky-looking creatures. Most species can grow between 1 to 2 inches in length. The largest species of cicada, the Empress cicada, can reach lengths of 2.8 inches and has a wingspan of up to 7 to 8 inches wide. That's a big insect. Their bodies can be black, brown, or green, and they can have red, white, or even blue eyes. It all depends on which species of cicada we're looking at. And there are a number of different species, up to 3,000 different types of cicadas in the world today. The ones that show up here in Connecticut are commonly known as the pharaoh cicada. They have black bodies, red eyes, and cool reddish-orange veined wings. The pharaoh cicada is the largest and most common species of cicada found in North America. They're also a species that has a fascinating and unusual life cycle, one that's going to be hard to ignore in the coming weeks. See, pharaoh cicadas are periodical cicadas. This means that while we see some of them here and there during the summer months, we only see them in mass amounts every 13 to 17 years. When these cicadas hatch into nymphs, they burrow down into the soil, usually around two feet deep. Then they wait, feeding off of sap they gather from plant roots and slowly growing. They will molt or shed their skin five times while underground, each time getting a little bit larger. After their fifth molt, they'll make tunnels close to the surface waiting for the soil around them to reach the right temperature above 64 degrees Fahrenheit. Once that temperature is reached, usually between late April to early June, they burrow the rest of the way out of the ground. They still don't quite look like cicadas that we're familiar with at this point. They have one more mole to go through first. To do this, they'll climb up any high surface they can find. After this last sixth molt, they wait in a high place for six days, giving time for their new exoskeleton to harden. So what's an exoskeleton? Well, an exoskeleton is a hard outer skin that supports and protects certain animals. Animals with exoskeletons wear their skeletons on the outside of their body. We are endoskeletons. This means that our skeleton is inside of our body, so we don't get to see it. But both the inside skeleton and the outside skeleton do the same thing. They protect organs and they help to support our bodies. Once a cicada's exoskeleton has hardened, they begin to look for other cicadas. And this is when we start to notice them. You see, while periodical cicadas are in their nymph or juvenile stage for between 13 to 17 years underground, adult cicadas only live for a few weeks. Their goal in that short amount of time is to meet up with other cicadas and to lay eggs. To do this, they begin to sing. It's the singing that we recognize the most when it comes to cicadas. The thing is, only male cicadas sing. And they're not using their voice to sing, same as we do. What they're using is their timbals. These are special drum-like organs on their exoskeleton that lets them make sounds. When a cicada wants to sing, it tenses a muscle attached to each timbal. This distorts or changes the sound of the timbal, kind of how a soda can distorts and makes sounds if we press our fingers into it. You get that clink sound when you press into a soda can? Yeah. Well, the timbal produces a sound which travels through the cicada to a large air sac in the cicada's abdomen. The sound is then amplified or made louder by the air sac and the cicada's eardrums, which are also located in their abdomen. Because of this amplification, when the sound leaves the cicada, 
it is up to 20 times louder than the initial sound produced by his timbals. Their singing attracts female cicadas who respond by flicking their wings at a certain rhythm. When a female cicada goes to lay her eggs, she cuts V-shaped slits into the bark of twigs and branches, and then she lays her eggs into those slits. She will lay about 20 eggs into each slit, making enough slits to lay up to 600 eggs total. Six to eight weeks later, the eggs hatch into young nymphs, who then drop from the trees down to the ground and burrow underneath the soil, beginning their another 13 to 17 year life cycle of growth. Now we see cicadas every year because not all of them are on that same 13 to 17 year life cycle. Some of them are annual cicadas, so they show up every year. But this year we're in for a treat. It's been 17 years since the last big periodical cicada boom, which means in a few weeks we may be seeing a great number of cicadas. Because when the periodical cicadas finally emerge, they do so in massive numbers. This is partially to ensure that they can meet other cicadas easily, but it's also a defense mechanism. Many animals, you see, find cicadas to be very tasty. In fact, even us humans can eat cicadas. There's even a cicada cookbook out there filled with recipes for chowing down on these funny-looking little bugs. Some people claim that cicadas taste like shrimp. Others say they taste more like asparagus, while some people even say they taste like peanut butter. Now that being said, it's best not to start catching cicadas in the wild and gobbling them down, especially not around here. You see, many cicadas that are in the wild contain mercury in their bodies, and that's a big threat around here in Danbury because we had so many hat factories that used mercury. And remember, these guys burrow in their nymphs down into the ground about two feet deep, and all that mercury that was in those hat factories was released back into the water and the ground. So those cicadas that are burrowing down, they've run into mercury and they probably have it in their bodies. It doesn't affect the cicada, but it can actually affect us. So no eating cicadas in the wild. So when you're a cicada and you're tasty and you've only got a few weeks above ground, well you need all the protection you can get. Unfortunately for cicadas, they don't have a stinger. They also don't bite. So how does a cicada defend itself? What they do is safety in numbers. Cicadas use a defense called predator satiation. How this works is that they arrive in such large numbers when they're doing that 13 or 17 year boom that there's just too many cicadas for any predator to take out all of them. Now at first this sounds like a good thing for predators. There's a lot of extra food. And at first the predators are very excited by this and they're gobbling up cicadas left and right. But the thing is, eventually, they kind of lose interest in the cicadas. They've had enough. They're not hungry anymore for them, and there's still billions and billions of cicadas out there. The number of cicadas around during a boom year gets to be so great that the predators just can't eat enough to keep up. In fact, many animals use this technique, including other insects and fish. So just how many cicadas are we talking about here? Brood 10, nicknamed the Great Eastern Brood, will lead to billions of cicadas popping up out of the ground in 14 states in North America. Now we may not see too many of them here in Danbury, but we will see some. And even if we don't see them in person, we'll definitely hear them singing. Because you see, their song can reach around 100 decibels. That's loud enough to drown out lawnmowers, traffic, and walkie-talkies. And when large numbers of them pop up every 13 to 17 years, the sound can be immense. Some people have compared the singing of cicadas during these brood years to that of motorcycles revving in their backyard. They're just that loud. And each species of cicada has its own unique call. The pharaoh cicada that we see here in Connecticut sounds kind of like a weed whacker or maybe like something out of a sci-fi movie. See, the thing is though, lots of people are afraid of cicadas, and it kind of makes sense. When you look at them, they're large, intimidating looking bugs that make a very loud noise. 
they're kind of creepy looking to a lot of people. But the truth is, cicadas can't hurt us. They don't have stingers, and they don't bite. There's really nothing a cicada can do to us other than keep us awake at night with their singing. Well, they're fascinating little creatures with an amazing long lifespan for bugs. And we should enjoy them when they come around this year because the next time we're going to see brood 10 cicadas is in 2038, another 17 years. So we should enjoy them while we have them this spring. Thank you for joining me this week on Nature Explorers Insects. Until next time, stay safe and stay curious. Bye, everyone.